Okay, let's look at another exponential function. So, this is sometimes confusing to students because of this negative here. Um, hopefully you've been taught that an exponential function has to have a base, so that's the number here that is larger than zero and it can't equal one. So, how can you have a negative there? So some students think that this doesn't work. Okay. Uh, let me rewrite the function and then maybe we can talk about why this does work. So that negative, <coughs> I can put a 1 in front of it. So that means that this negative is going to multiply whatever the exponential expression is going to give me. So now keep in mind that we should use our order operations here. So when I work with this function, I'm supposed to plug in an x, figure out what I have, use that as an exponent on the 2, and then I'm going to make it a negative. So this is always going to return a negative. Okay, so we're not multiplying a negative. So another way that I can show this is this way. Say I got a 2 out of this, and negative 2 squared, like this, means that I have 2 squared. Well, 2 squared is worth 4, and then I need to make it a negative. So that's actually a negative 4. So don't confuse that with this. A negative 2 squared means that you're squaring the negative. So that's the difference between the two expressions. Okay, so we have to keep that in mind a little bit. Um, I need to, oops, I'll need to space here in a little bit. Let me erase that. And we're going to continue working with this. So, <coughs> what do we have? Well, we have this plus 1 here. So that plus 1, that means that, the, uh, that the, the whole graph is shifted up 1 unit. So this was a shift up of 1 unit. So that means that y equals 1 is going to be my new horizontal asymptote. Because it used to be at 0. This negative 1 is going to flip this graph. So whatever used to be positive is now going to be negative. So that's a flip. Okay, well that one will come out of the table, so I'm not too worried about that. The x minus 3, that's, an all, that, that's another shift. So x minus 3, that means that it's actually a shift right of 3 units. Because you think of this as a plus 3. So shift the whole graph 3 units to the right. So now when you make your table, if you are used to using a negative 1, 0, and 1, you're going to shift that 3 units to the right. So 0 plus 3 is 3. So the negative 1 became a 2, and the 1 became a 4. So here are the values that I should be looking at. Okay, So two of these should give me whole numbers, and then one will be that fraction that's going to lead me to its, my asymptote. So let's start with this 3. So this will be a negative 1 times 2 to the 3 minus 3 is 0 plus 1. So let's, let's write that a little bit further out. So 2 to the power of 0 is 1. So negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, and a negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So you get 0 there. You do that here. You do 4 minus 3 plus 1. That's 2 to the first, so that's 2. So this becomes a negative 2 plus 1. So that's a negative 1. And then here you get your fraction. And so this is a little, excuse me about that. This is a little uh, awkward here <coughs> because you get 2 minus 3. So this is like sort of that double negative. But again, the negative doesn't have anything to do with negative numbers when it's an exponent. This is a negative 1 times a half. So this is a negative 1 half plus 1. So that's that's a half. So we're good? All right, so that looks a little awkward because didn't I say something about the asymptote is at 1? And I, I don't quite see that happening here yet, at least not the way it is right now. So let's just graph it and, and let's see what happens when I graph it. So, make a coordinate system, mark your asymptote, so your asymptote is at 1, so I'm, I'm still thinking the asymptote is at 1 and that I did that right. So there's my asymptote, and then at 2, 3, and 4 I should get a dot. So at 2 I have a half, so I'm about right there, because that was 1. At 3 I'm at 0, and at 4 I'm at a negative 1. And then here you sort of see what's happening. You're being led away from your asymptote here. On this side is where you are approaching your asymptote. Okay, so that is... Well, 
that was awful. That that is what is happening here. <coughs> is that you get an exponential function that was flipped. So remember a while back I said the flip will take care of itself. So this thing, that negative, the table will take care of it. It did. As long as you use your asymptote here at one as a guideline, then you should feel comfortable graphing it this way. Okay, hope it helps.